I'ma get it how I wanna get it, you don't get it. I can do anything, I don't got a limit. I'ma make my mind up, I'm committed. It might take some time, I take a minute. I won't give up, I don't give any shit. I do All right, guys, here we go. Andy Elliott. I told him I wanted to introduce the podcast. This is actually, uh, it's the Andy Elliott One Percenter podcast, but it's also the beginning of the Code to Winning podcast. And I'm here with a good friend of mine. He's an amazing businessman. He's an entrepreneur. Dude, he's just so cool, man. He's always happy. He's always fired up. He's got the greatest attitude in the world. You see a smile, right? <laughs> You're like, dude, I love this guy already. Like, you can tell he's jacked up. But I just want to tell you guys, it's going to be a cool podcast. We're going to cover sales, entrepreneurship, winning, family. We're going to cover how to get it all. And we're going to change it up a little bit. Usually, I just kind of roll and I would interview some stuff. But he's like, dude, I got some questions I want to ask. So on the first Code to Winning podcast, my man, rip it. Whatever you want to talk about, let's give a massive value today. And let's kick some butt. I'm all yours. Awesome, awesome. It's a privilege to be with the world's best sales trainer, actually. So, Andy, currently right now, you have a program that's running over... Th- Four hundred thousand, yeah, yeah, uh, over, over right? five hundred thousand sales. Five hundred, right? uh-huh. wow, that's actually improved right since then. So I actually met Andy um, in Vegas last year, April. It was um, the closest school. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. Um, it was the first time actually meeting him in person, and for the first time, I actually saw like your team um, up on stage, mm-hmm. just crushing it. You got up on stage and you crushed it. However, this was. This Andy Elliott started somewhere. Can you give us a brief introduction of Andy Elliott and who you are and how this became about as well? So you want me to start someone since I was young or yes. since I started since, my since business? Since you were young, since you were young. Yeah, okay. Well, so my mom left when I was two, five brothers and sisters, Jerry Springer shit show. Just in case anybody know who I am, mm-hmm. um, not qualified to have a great life, right? I was a loser. Um, anyways, a lot of people would call this a victim story. I think it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I always say what people don't get when they're a kid, they crave as an adult. And I didn't get a lot of love as a kid, so I wanted it as an adult. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any money as a kid, and I was poor, so I wanted it as an adult. Mm -hmm. All I wanted my whole life was an opportunity to find my way out. And at 18 years old, I found sales. And at sales, I made 125 grand at 18, I made 225 at 19, and I made 500 grand by the time I was 20 years old. Um, At 22, I was making 800 grand. I learned how to make money very quickly by recreating myself, learning how to speak, learning how to talk, learning how to influence, learning how to persuade. Um, And then anyways, um, I became a leader. By the way, anybody watching this, if you'll get great at sales and you'll get great at leadership, you can get rich. Okay, just just so you know, like you don't need a degree and I want you to get your degrees and I want you to get all that stuff, but there's a good chance even if you get one, you still won't use it. Okay, sales and leadership will make you rich. So um, I, I was good at sales and then I moved up into a leader. And then that was kind of where the challenging part got is I had 20 sales guys and I couldn't seem to get any of the 12, 20 sales guys that I had better than I was when I sold. Mm-hmm. So that was a challenge and I thought, well, how am I gonna make these guys great? Now I'm not getting paid off my own production, now I'm paid off everybody's production. So I had to go to training. So once I started going to training and I started teaching my guys word tracks, how to speak, how to talk, how to articulate their words, I, tar- I started teaching them how to present numbers on a, on a piece of paper or on, on a screen, the way you present it, the way you deliver it is the way the client perceives it. I started going over all these things that helped me become successful as, sales, as a salesperson. And once I taught them this, their numbers increased. And I learned that repetition was the mother of skill. So if I wanted them to have a lot of skill, I had to make them train mm-hmm. daily. Now, I do want to tell you guys something. My sales team didn't like training daily. I actually didn't like training daily when I was a salesperson. But I learned the value in training. The more I trained, the more I learned, the more I earned. So every day, no matter what, because I was a good leader and I was disciplined, and only great leaders are disciplined, okay, um, I made my team train every day. As uncomfortable it was, as, as much as they complained, no matter how much they bitched, I didn't care. I trained them every day. And in due time, I was breaking every record with my team, and I had a lot of them outperforming me from when I was selling. So sales and leadership will get you rich. I decided to start my own business one day. Um, I want to tell you guys, it's not for everybody. I'll tell you, being an entrepreneur is a very special thing. Four out of five. Yeah, four out of five millionaires work for someone else. I would recommend finding a great company, find a great leader, find a great organization, and Go be their top performer in it and go be a great leader. You don't get sued. You don't get risk. You don't have to front front all the money. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many upsides to being a a kick butt entrepreneur. Now I decided to be an entrepreneur. 
which is the Elliott Group, which is yeah. what you see today. And that started 2019, right? Just uh, 2019, COVID. yeah. And so I'm going to bring you up to speed. I started and uh, I had to sell everything on my own, had to create everything on my own, had to do all my own social media, had to create. It's just like I was doing all this stuff and I was stretched a million different ways. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that no matter how good I would, was at what I did, an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. Love that. So I realized that no matter how good I was, if I wanted to be really great, I would need again to do what I did when I was younger, 100%. which would be to get a team and then create this team to be better than me. Hey guys, I would love to personally invite you to come train out with me. I'm gonna be coached by my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. All you have to do is have trained with me at least on a training course before. So if you're watching this, if you've purchased one of my training courses before, you qualify for this. By the way, it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It's absolutely free. So what does that mean? That means if you're watching this and you've trained with me, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I want you to come train with me. I want you to come out to Scottsdale, Arizona. You're going to train with me while I get coached from my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi. It's going to be three days straight. This room is going to be filled with about 500 people that are raging fans of what the Elliott Group stands for, is the core values, the standards, and winning and kicking ass. And if that's you, you're going to be with these like-minded people and you're going to be with me while I coach. I love you guys. It's something that I've never done before, but it's a private invite for those who have trained with me. So if you want to come to this, just text the number 918-210-02. Two five four. Write it down. It's very simple. 918-210-0254. Shoot me a text. Say, hey, Andy, my name's John Watson. I did buy your training course, you know, a year ago. I would love to come train with you on these three days with you and your company while you're getting coached. I'd love to spend that time with you. If that's you, boom, we'll send you over an invitation. It's limited seating, only 450 to 500 people, and then we're cutting it off. Let's get back to the video. And make them the best. And people are like, well, what if they quit and they go work somewhere else? I don't think that way. Okay, I operate in the abundance mindset and I operate as a leadership and as a mentor to everybody that works for me. So my heart's on my sleeve. All I wanna do is make people better and I love my team and I love their family and I'll do anything for them. And dude, I've retained 99% of my people by operating out of that way and oh, I'm not no. afraid. So so I just, anyways, Andy Elliott today, I, I built the team. Um, I have almost 100 guys, 100 coaches on payroll, men and women. Are they all in Scottsdale? Or They're all here. Okay. I don't have an outside facility. They're all okay. in Scottsdale. You'll walk outside these walls. You'll start running into them and meet them. You see their energy. You see the love they have. You see how much fun they have. It's like we built the Elliott Group. And by the way, I built underdogs that are just like me. A lot of the times I'm, I am tend to be drawn towards people who have scars, who, who are broken, um, who have been counted out. And those people, I'm like, this guy's got a chip on his shoulder. Everybody else bet against him. So if I can train this person when everybody else bet against him and I show them true loyalty, which people crave, and I'd be a true mentor and a great leader, like, dude, I'm going to build me an army. 100%. And so that's what we do. And we focus on our families. We focus on being great parents. Uh, we focus on being physically fit. We focus on doing our job at the highest level, customer service to the real, being close to God, mm -hmm. and just being proud of ourselves. So not to answer that long, but that was kind of a crazy question. But that's how we got where we are today. And we're just not stopping. We're just psycho. No, just for that, you actually answered three of my questions. So okay. I really appreciate that. Now, I followed your story, obviously, from Oklahoma up until coming towards here as well. Um, you and I are, are very similar where we've worked for not so good leaders. Sure. And then we've worked um, with or kind of mentored by great people. So I know you you look up to, uh, you know, Patrick Bet David. You've got a lot of Patrick mentorship from like Bradley. King. So I've, I've seen the transition literally from like the year that I met you compared to now. How important is like a great leader? How, how important is that on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, so there's two folds of this. Number one, I never had a great leader before 2019. Okay, so I want you to understand this. Every, it's, it's like, you, you know what a loser is, right? Absolutely, everyone okay. knows a loser. Okay, so you know what a loser is. Yes. So if you want to become a winner and you've never seen a winner, but you know what a loser is, you just flip it. You just do the opposite of what losers do. Losers go home at night and watch TV. Winners go home at night and study. Mm -hmm. Losers don't wake up in the morning and go to the gym before the sun comes up and start their day. And they're slow, groggy, and you know they're in a bad mood all day mm -hmm. long. And then the first person they run, in, run, run into tells them how their day is going to go. Winners, they wake up in the morning, beat the sun up, go to the gym, bring home special energy to their family, get their day started right. They're in a great mood all day long, ready to kill. 100%. Losers don't show up on time to work. Winners do. So it's like I just thought like – like if I want to be a good leader, like I was led by the worst leaders ever. So I just flipped it. 
I was like, I'm not going to lie to people. I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to give respect first. People are always like, my leader's always like, you got to earn your respect. No, dude, I'll respect you first. You're a man. Like I'm going to respect you. Now, if you do something that makes me not respect you anymore, then like, I won't respect you. But like, I think I'll give you respect first. I'm okay with that. Like, I, like, I just flip it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but how important is a good leader? I just want to explain. So some of you guys right now, I haven't had a good leader. Okay. Well, you're in an era right now at the time we're shooting this video is 2024. There are a lot of really good leaders that you can study up on. Hundred percent. Okay. So like, as I was younger, I'm like 1999, like this stuff doesn't exist when I'm getting into sales. So my leaders were the human beings right in front of my face. Now you can go get around good leaders. So anybody right now, the importance of a leader is everything. It's a, pro a proximity. It's an ideology of what you believe you can achieve. Um, it's like, hey, are you learning from somebody that money is everything and sacrifice your family? Or are you learning that there's achievement and fulfillment? Because if you get achievement without fulfillment, you're screwed. And if you get fulfillment without achievement, you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to feel like a loser and you're not going to take care of your family. I like that. So the goal is achievement and fulfillment. That's the secret to life. Love that so much. Um, one of the things that I, I've also kind of learned and studied about you, you don't micromanage. Mm. So I've seen you've actually built a, a company full of leaders. It's, it's lions. It's stallions. They just they cut through. They're relentless. You know the twins, um, the Kirby's. Like I, I, love I, I love them all. Like you know. And the thing is, how important is it not to micromanage when you're training and developing your team? Well, number one, when I hire all my people, number one, just from the beginning, okay, I make this super clear. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to babysit you. If li Listen, if you need me to tell you what to do, if I need to wake you up when your alarm goes off to get up for the gym, if I needed to do that, if you walk into work and you did an exercise before you came into work, you're not going to work here. I'm not telling you that like, listen, don't work here. If you don't want discipline, if you don't want to be held accountable, if you don't want me to be direct with you, don't work here. But I will not babysit you. You know what your job is. You know what our purpose is. You know what we're doing, you know how we're doing it, and you know why we're doing it, okay? All day long, your family's counting on you. When you leave the house and you come in here with me, they know why you're coming here, to change people's lives and to help people. So with that being said, I will not micromanage you to come in here and do what you said you're going to do as a man. All I care about is can you keep your word? That's all I want you to do. If you say you're going to come into work and you promise your family you're going to come work as hard as you can while you're at work and you're going to go home and be with them, you're going to come here and work as hard as you can. If you tell me if I hire you right now, you're going to come in here and you're going to be my hardest worker. I'm not going to have to babysit you. You're going to take care of everybody. You're going to be an alpha leader, which continues to break all the records. Also, if you want to show me love, show my team love. Listen, you want to get close to me? Go get close to my team. You want to freaking be on the forefront of my mind all day long? Cheer my team on. Don't, don't come be nice to me and be disrespectful to my team. So the way that I bring people on is I'm very clear with them. That look, this isn't your old job, this is your dream life. So I just tell people, I'm like, dude, if you need a babysitter, you're not going to work here. I'm not going to tell you what to do. So my team, they have their own sales meetings at 8.30 every morning. All of them are here. Nobody's late. The parking lot, all the cars are backed in. Mm -hmm. We don't park straight into the parking lot. We back in. Everybody has these, these rules, these core values, these standards that they all operate by. And by the way, nobody is anybody's boss. There's me and my wife as the owners, and then there's coaches, period. I love that. There's no managers. I have no sales manager. People are like, I need a sales manager. I'm like, you don't need a sales manager. Dude, if your people know what to do, they don't need a babysitter. That's, that's stupid. I'd rather spend the money. I'd rather give my team the money mm -hmm. than hire a sales manager. If I got to hire a sales manager to tell people they got to make sales calls, that's stupid. So anyways, I just want to tell you, that's, I set the standard from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think we're really clear. And another deal I want to say is I don't walk around on eggshells around people. So like when something isn't right, like I'm going to tell you. Okay, I think that's super important if you're a leader. Like, you want to build the team that you don't have to walk around and, and be on eggshells. And by the way, you don't want to have a leader that you got to do that with either. If my team sees me not holding my, my, my commitment, my yeah. promise, they can come up to me and go, Andy, you're not keeping your word. Guys, Andy Elliott, listen, if you're interested in real estate investing, I've got the Hustle Summit that's going to be June 1st. It's going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys know where I live. Now, this event is going to be one day. It's going to be super simple. I've got a boy in mind. His name's Eric Klein. 
He's built about four eight-figure businesses, and right now, he's teaching people how to do wholesale real estate and make a hundred grand a month. You guys just text the number below and I'll get you information on the tickets. I'd love to get close to you. I will be here. I'll meet all of you. I'll be speaking to you. Text the number below. I'll get you the information. Let's kill it. I want them to call me out. I love that. I'm not better than them, and they aren't better than me. We are a freaking family, and that's the way we roll. So. So like, that's how I get my guys to run hard is that number one, from day one, the minute I hired them, like that's what I told them. Then secondly, what I told them is found to be true when they get here, because that's how my team rolls. And if anybody doesn't roll that way, they won't work here. I love that, which goes back to what you said earlier on, an individual can be defeated, mm -hmm. but a team with the core, like in you know, a foundation yeah, cannot be defeated. Can't. Cannot. Yeah. And I like, um, one of the things you said actually at the close of school, um, one of the one somebody, somebody asked a question from the audience, and you said that don't delegate too early. Mm -hmm. Often, sometimes people build a team and they're ready to like just like sit back and park the brakes. Well, well. they want to go be a a, a barstool warrior. <laughs> I never thought about it. That yeah, way. they want to go sit down. Do listen. I'm gonna tell you the truth, okay? We we have a nine figure business. Number one, my I go home every day. My jaw is numb. Okay, people may say, "Well, I don't want that." I don't want that. Listen to me. Winning comes with a price. The minute you quit paying the price, someone's going to take you out. Winning comes with a price. I love what I do. Okay, every day I go home, my jaw's numb. I talk all day long. We saw you just and I love it. Yeah. yeah, I'm always pop, 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 pop. Okay, when I go home, most of the time I got a headache. Most of the time my jaw's mm -hmm. numb. But I'm so happy, dude. I'm telling you, losing is exhausting and winning is exhausting. Just choose your exhaustion. It's like cold or hot, choose. Nobody likes lukewarm. God talks about in the Bible, he hates lukewarm. He's like, just make a decision, man. Go all in and be hot. Do you like, it's like, do you want cold coffee or do you want hot coffee? You don't want lukewarm coffee. Absolutely not. No, pick it, hot or cold. Nobody likes lukewarm. So it's like, hey, get out of the game or go all in. And I'm, I'm obsessed. So it's like, it's like my deal is, is that I just, I give so much and I try so hard and I, I show my team that I'm not better than them and they're not better than me. But by the way, this is a secret to leaders. Never let your team outgrow you. Remember I told you that I would, my goal was to make my team better than me. And I tell them, I said, my goal is to make you better than me, but I'm going to be honest with you. The, how hard I work, the way that I study, the passion that I have, there's a good chance you could never get there, man, because I'm psycho. But I would love to see you try. And so it keeps them chasing me, right? But I'm so crazy, I keep growing. And I'm just like, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. And I just keep growing. And by the way, I'm their mentor and they love that. You know how the sales industry is. 100%. I'm like, dude, I'll close anything. Like, you can't close that? Like, give me the phone. Come on, man. And I'll close it. Because whatever I say is gonna happen, I'm gonna have, it's gonna happen because it's a law of manifestation. I know that. And that's why I get what I want. But I go home every day. I don't delegate anything. Remember, I don't have a sales manager. I don't have any of that. A lot of these teams, they got salesmen. And they're broke-ass companies. They got all these positions and titles. We don't have titles. We don't have positions. We have a family. We have a family. We have a commitment. We have discipline. And we do what we say we're going to do. And that's why we kill it. Wow. We're an army. Love it. Um, I keep talking about like, because I've attended a few of your events as well, and one of the stuff that I keep like, you know, just rehashing to get, you know, get people to understand um, how important like these sales trainings are, these these um, events are, because they're just so uplifting. I remember mm -hmm. just sitting in the front there, you know, when you guys got up on stage, you just set the president and the bar so high. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there like, what have I just witnessed? Mm -hmm. Is this even possible? Because we always have a to, you know, aspire to build a sales team, and then you see something you can't, you've never even imagined right before your eyes as well. Which leads to my next question: um, You got up on stage and you said, "I will give you one million dollars if you were to recruit any of my you know, team members or any of my guys mm -hmm. right now." And I was like, yeah, "That's very, very bold." And then I got to see, you know, like I said, I work with the Kirby's personally and so forth as well. How do you build? Like, what's the first step in building an unrecruitable sales force? Because that's very, step very important. Step one is you have to be their mentor, and people only choose someone as their mentor if that person changes their life. You have to change their life. Every day, I have one goal. That's to change my team's life. Hey, guys. Sorry to interrupt the video. As you're listening to my man right here, I love this guy. He's a great leader. Um, I would tell you, if you're looking for a level 10 earning opportunity,
You want to crush it and kill it. This guy's the greatest. He's the best. I always say people are always looking for a good leader in a great organization. You guys can actually join his team. So you guys are going to see a link below in the description box. If you guys want to answer a couple questions, send a 60-second video. My man will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. So I just want to tell you guys, I appreciate you. If you're looking for a great opportunity to work for a great leader in a great organization and make really good money, here's your chance. Fill out that link. Let's get back to the video. If I change my team's life, we will change everyone else's life. I cannot have my team do or tell people that they can change their lives or I can change other people's lives if I haven't changed their own life. So that's step one. Step one, people will be, if I changed your life, you'd be indebted to me. You're like, dude, I owe you. I, you've changed my life. You saved my life. Really, a lot of these guys say, Andy saves me. They say you saved my life. Um, I just think that's the key to building step one, an unrecruitable sales team. Uh, unrecruitable team in any industry. Um, step number two is self-leadership. I lead myself the way that I tell them to lead, which means I don't have double standards. So I am exactly who I tell them they can become, and I show them that on a daily basis, and I never let my guard down. So with that being said, whether the camera's on me or not on me, I'm always operating at a high form of human excellence just so I can inspire them to believe that they can do it because I can't get them to do something I can't do and I can't get them to have something I don't have. So like self-leadership, like that's super important to me. That's like the number one rule in leadership. So that's how I think you build an unrecruitable sales team. And I'm going to say number three, keep your word. I've never lied to them. I told my team in the beginning, I said, if I ever lie to any one of you, pack your shit and get out of here. I want you to quit immediately. If I ever lie to you just once, do me a favor. I don't deserve to be your leader anymore. Leave me. So I never lie. I'm held at a high level of accountability and they know that. And they love that. And I put that out there so that they would be aware that if I ever don't keep my word to them, that they're free to leave. But if I do keep my word and I am loyal and everything that I say is gonna happen, I give, I give everything in my power to make that happen. And I always make sure that them and their family are the, on the forefront of my mind. Dude, like, they're, why would they ever leave? Why would anyone ever leave any of that? People wait their whole life to try to find that. And so I built it in a company, you know? Awesome. And um, somebody out there is probably watching and has good intentions, is a good leader. There's obviously different characteristics to people. You and Brad couldn't be more different in personality, but totally. obviously have like one goal, even like you and you know, Patrick, Pat David. What happens with those people that really see you, you trending every single day, I see a mm -hmm. video of you, but are not as intense and want to try and inspire the way that you inspire? Like, h how does that work? Well, okay, so I'm an intense person, okay, because I've learned that it is a strategy to get through to a lot of people. But I want to back up why I'm intense is because I'm passionate. I'm grateful to be alive. Okay, I truly believe I shouldn't be alive anymore. I should be dead. I don't know why God has allowed me to continue to continue to leave, uh, live when I've made so many mistakes in my past and I've done stuff. But I think it's because he wants me to go inspire other people and lead the way and be a good leader and be a good mentor and be a good disciple. Okay, um, but like I look at myself, man, and I'm like, like, why wouldn't I be passionate about everything that I do? I got kids. I got a wife. I woke up today. Like, dude, I'm not dead. So why would I act like I'm dead? Like, I love life. Like, dude, honestly, sometimes I go to bed and I sleep for two hours at night and I sleep with insomnia. Like, I stay up for hours because I love my life. I love everything that's going on in my life. I love everything about my life. I love my problems. I love it all. I love, I love chasing what's possible. I love that. So uh, if somebody's not in, as intense as me, um, which I'm not being like massively intense right now, mm -hmm. but like if somebody's not as intense as me, then I would say, okay, cool, like do you. But be passionate about what you do. Like people gotta know that you care. By the way, the, the definition of persuasion is transfer of emotion. So you must transfer the way you feel into someone else if you want them to feel that way. 100, 100%. I, I'm sorry I'm sticking a lot on this leadership. I just no, feel I like it's it, so important like in today's world, especially with the lack of leaders that are struggling and Whatever are not really motivating as well. So, uh, The next question that I want to talk about, um, this has been receiving 
I, I view sometimes your comments and there's, there's a bit of hate when you, you know when you mention these. So these are the standards you, that are very very high that you often quoted saying, if you don't have a six pack, mm -hmm. you're fired. If you cheat on your spouse, you're fired. Mm -hmm. If you're a dirtbag, <laughs> you're fired. Why are standards so important? And would you say some of those that I mentioned, probably just the first one, would you say it's a bit controversial? Well, yeah, because, you know, pack. well, number one, people don't like being held accountable, okay? So at the end of the day, everybody has an opportunity to look at themselves in the mirror before they get dressed for work. And I want to ask you this. Do you think that these people would have any problem if they woke up, they loved who they were, they could tell their discipline edge was there? Look, dude, when you walk by the mirror, you can tell exactly how badass you are, okay? Like, you get to see your discipline blade. You know if your discipline blade is getting dull or if your discipline blade is sharp by what you stick in your mouth and by like how you take care of your body, which is your temple that God gave you. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I can see that. And so can you. So it's a metaphor, six pack or you're fired. It says that it's, if you don't have a six pack, you're fired. It means that if every day you're not continually trying to focus on your physical body, then I'm not interested in having you on my team because physical body rolls into mental toughness and mental toughness, we want to intentionally every day pursue hard things because hard things are going to come up. And if I'm pursuing them and I'm going to the gym and I'm putting myself through hard work intentionally, then when hard things come up, it's like, dude, like I do this stuff on anyways, like this is nothing. Um, and then by the way, like if you're a dirt bag, like I wouldn't hire a person like <laughs> that, but like, but like if you're just a bad person, like I don't want to be around you, like I don't need the money. Okay. So get out of here. Like we're not doing this for money anyways. So that's why we're growing. And then um, if you cheat on your spouse, like if you're a cheater, like listen to me, like I, I don't want to be around people that are frauds. You know, like hey, either make, either make the commitment or don't make it. Does that make sense? Like it's either make the commitment or don't make it. And if you make the commitment, then it's cool, let's do it. You know, like be good, like be all in. It's like be all in, be all out, make a decision. Um, but I don't like liars, man. Look, dude, I mean like I used to be a certain person so I understand who I need to be now um, anybody that works for me by the way they don't come here and they're like implying on indeed for a sales job it's like when you come here like you already know what I stand for you already know how I roll by the way I have thousands of people that apply for a job with us every day thousands of people and I have a hundred guys that work here so um, you know getting a job here is very rare and if you do get a job here um, or, or it's, 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 it's a life with us. It's a mm -hmm. career. It's not a job. It's a career. Um, then like, you already know the standards I'm after, but my standards though, um, are what we display to the world as possible. And so I want my team to be leaders to everybody. Um, and I don't want people to be frauds. Um, and then also like another deal about standards is that dude, you can tell a lot about how people live just by the language that comes out of their mouth. Hundred percent. Okay. Like I tell people, I'm like, dude, I can tell your core values and your standards just by what you tell me. Okay, and then also I can see you. So um, I'm not judging you. I think that everybody has a lot of work to do. The question is, is if you're doing the work, I'll respect you. If you're not doing it, I just don't respect you. I like that a yeah, lot. So, so I have a guy that works here that literally doesn't have a six pack. He's still 100 pounds overweight, but he's lost 150 pounds. So I'm just giving an example. Like, like I, have, I have mad respect for this guy. Like this guy's gonna have to have some stomach surgery, like, or he's gonna have to have like his skin removed. He has, he's lost so much fat. But like, I love the fact that he's trying to get better and get healthier and get in better shape. I just love it, man. You know, and he doesn't have a six pack, but I just, I, he's getting better, so I'm addicted to it. I love it. You know, so the, it was, it's just a metaphor for standards. I like that a lot. Um, and not just to shift over towards like sales and and more like. Um, just the experience you know it's a very cutthroat industry regardless where you're at as well what's your thoughts i, I know i personally know because i've watched all your your material what are your thoughts when salesmen use the excuse of burnout well number one burnout's not real okay people lose their purpose and i'll explain this Th this is how winner this is how winners operate okay and this is how losers operate so life is going to throw you a lot of hard things it's going to throw you a lot of hardship life is always going to do that but what happens is that when you're going through life and you forget why you're doing what you're doing, you think you're burned out. 
Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're listening to my man right here, I love this guy. He's a great leader. Um, I would tell you, if you're looking for a level 10 earning opportunity, you want to crush it and kill it, this guy's the greatest. He's the best. I always say people are always looking for a good leader in a great organization. You guys can actually join his team. So you guys are going to see a link below in the description box. If you guys want to answer a couple questions, send a 60-second video. My man will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. So I just want to tell you guys, I appreciate you. If you're looking for a great opportunity to work for a great leader in a great organization and make really good money, here's your chance. Fill out that link. Let's get back to the video. That's the problem. Like you remember right now, and just I'm going to talk to you. Why did you start doing all this? Like why? Well, you remember a long time ago and so you start and you're doing all these things and you keep doing all this and you go through all these things and life isn't fair and you're not getting ahead and you have troubles and hardships and now you're fighting with your wife and just as all these things are happening and all of a sudden you're like dude like the reason why you're burned out the reason why you're struggling is because you forgot why you're doing all this and if you just always remember why you're doing this every morning when you wake up like dude you'll never have a problem you'll never have a worry and if it's a hard day, you'll be like, thank you. Like, I owe you. And at the end of that day, you'll have a euphoric moment because you remembered that what you're after, all the stuff you went through today and that great attitude you kept and why you pushed through that day, like it was all worth it because what you're after, your why, like why you're doing this is like so worth it. And that's your purpose. And my purpose stays on my heart all the time. I mean, no bull crap. Like that's why life doesn't throw me off because I never forget why I'm doing what I'm doing. But life is very good at making people forget why they started. Okay? Devil came to kill, still destroy. We're done. Boom. Boom. All right, I want to just ask actually one last question. Would that be okay? Yeah. So um, we're at close of school, and you invite your son up on stage. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous for him. I, I, I'm sitting in the front there, all access, and I'm nervous. And you just, like, the, the crowd is full, it's packed and you throw objection, boom, and he overcomes it. Mm -hmm. And you throw objection, boom, and he overcomes it. And you throw objection, I'm like, how do you do that? Like, how do you train him at such a young age? And why is it important for you to do that? Well, so one of the biggest things is, is that I think the greatest skill, um, or some of the greatest skills that I could give my son is number one, how to be an amazing speaker. I think it's super important that anything that my son knows that he's going to get, he's going to have to influence, persuade, paint pictures, tell stories. He's going to have to learn how to get his point across really quick, and he's going to have to be good at it. If I die early, I need to make sure that my son's good at speaking. It's important. Everybody's a speaker. You're a public speaker. Whether you're speaking to one or 10,000, you got to know how to speak. you got to believe in yourself. you got to be confident. I tell my son, I'm like, do listen. And so I hit my son with objections at home. I say, look, I know you're not selling anything hypothetically yet, but every day you're selling me whether I should believe in you or not. Okay. And I do believe in you and I love you, but every day, like I'm not, everybody's your dad. Okay. So I tell my son, if you want to be a diamond, you got to go through pressure. Number one, diamonds go through pressure. Number two, you're going to mess up. That means you're going to have cuts. Every time you get a cut on you, you're going to get embarrassed and people are going to laugh at you. And those cuts create the diamond to be worth more money. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pressure, cuts, heat. After they go through the pressure, the more cuts a diamond has, the more it's worth. I said, you got to go through the cuts, son. You got to go through the reps. Repetition is another skill. And then the heat. Now you got to be willing to take the heat. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you get up here and you mess up, own it. If you get up here and you crush it, own it. But everything will result by the practice that you did when nobody saw you. Love it. So my son... He'll uh, practice on things in different industries and sales objections that I tell him, if you want to be a good speaker, you need to memorize in advance things that you want to say. They're called word tracks. And that way, at the time you're saying them, you don't have to think about what to say when there's pressure against you. You know, they say in the military, when your back's against the wall, you always fall to your lowest level of skill. Your lowest level of skill when your back's against the wall. Well, I know when my back's against the wall, I know I need to know what I need to do. So I practice with them at home. Uh, it's fun. I tell them we don't practice until we're going to get it right. We practice until we can't get it wrong. And then when I put them up in front of people, even though there's people and they may be taking up his headspace, mm -hmm. right? Because he's thinking about what do they say. My son knows that he never should worry about what anybody thinks about him. Okay? Like he should never worry about it. You know, Brad always says alidoxophobia. I know you've heard him say it. It's the fear of what other people think about you. We all have it sometimes. Yeah, but 
but you need to understand that it's just it's just self torture. It's self sabotage. Like that's who cares? Most of these people aren't even thinking about you. They're thinking about what you think about them. Like, dude, it's all fake. It's all crap. It's all junk. Again, another great tool used by the devil to freaking destroy people. Okay. Um, so, you know, like I said, I, I like, I like training under pressure. It's a big deal that I like doing. It's a way that I grow salespeople as I train them under pressure, live fire. Um, but my son, dude, I just want to be a good, I want to be a good dad. I take my kids everywhere with me, we travel all over the country. I take my kids, they all homeschool. Um, you know, listen, dude, it's your life. I always say this, like if you, if you can't find what you're looking for, uh, build it, right? Build it. And then, um, you know, don't let anybody tell you what you want to do. Like, look, learn from great mentors, Mm. um, study the world, the world's your library. If you know what you're looking for, it'll give you what you're looking for. Study it, figure out what's important to you. And then dude, once you figure out what those things are that are important to you, like go live it, like go do it. And and then people are going to laugh at you. They're going to make fun of you. You know, you talked about, Hey, you know, people, you know, I wear short shorts. Like people laugh at me for that. Like, dude, I'm going to tell you this. Like, dude, I've been laughed at my whole life, dude. When I was poor, I got laughed at. When I was rich, I got laughed at. Like, <laughs> like, bro, anytime you're getting yourself out there, you're going to get laughed at. And the people that are laughing at you are people that literally hate themselves. So just never forget that. Like, they don't, they, they, they don't hate you, dude. They just don't like themselves. And that's the reason why they're being the way they're being. 100%. Usually, so the podcast is called The Code to Winning Insights You'll Need Today to Seize the World Tomorrow. The final one is what defines a winner? If you were to give one phrase, what defines a winner? Well, I want you to think about something real quick, okay? What you do when the camera's not on you defines whether you're a winner or not. That's the best way I can define it. If I, if I was winning, let's say my name's winning. I'm not Andy Alley. I'm, true, I'm a true spirit of winning, right? Mm-hmm. And I got a camera on me. Would I be like, oh yeah, oh he's coming, man. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> I see you, man. I see you, dude. That's my boy. Or would I be like, dude, you're not doing nothing. I believe that winning, the code to winning, needs to be what you do when no one's looking dis- determines what a winner is. Okay? What's done in private many times is rewarded massively in public. Okay? So just remember that. So I think that if it comes down to winning, the code to winning, and by the way, if you guys are watching my channel, make sure you guys go and follow his uh, YouTube channel, which is gonna be the code to winning. And I, But just in case you're on my channel, but I wanna tell you guys something real quick, that I think that winning, um, it doesn't recognize a lot of people. They're not willing to pay the price. Dreams come with the price. If you don't pay the price, you don't get the dream. Love it, love it very much. Um, Andy Elliott, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you, man. I'm, awesome. I'm excited to watch you blow up. I'm get it how I want to get it. You don't get it. I can do anything. I don't got a limit. I'm going to make my mind. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. I got lessons, lessons to give them. Think the masters are open and wishing to think and driven and cutting the ribbons off.